What I'd like you to do is imagine walking into a classroom full of seven-year-olds who have been tasked with the opportunity to build a paper roller coaster, much like the projects you see out in the hallways. What's going on in there? Well, there's probably some groups of students who are working together, cutting, gluing, taping, making their project. But then there's also students who are wandering around the room, those who are struggling to share the materials with others, and still groups that are arguing and are completely unable to complete the task. That's frustrating for the students. But for the teacher, it's also frustrating because in these types of experiences, when we need to be stepping back and observing the collaborative learning that's taking place so that we can assess the students, we are instead thrust into the role of a referee. This is a problem. We know the students need to learn to collaborate. Dr. Tricia Craig, a curriculum director at Fort Cherry School District says, to be successful in the workforce, students need to not only be knowledgeable and skillful, but they also need to know how to effectively communicate and function in team-based projects. That's not just for older students. That's for younger ones as well. Kindergarten, first, second graders. And this isn't a frustration that just I experience in my classroom. We surveyed 26 educators, and 88% of them said that they were, it was difficult or very difficult to assess project-based group projects in their classroom. So what's the solution? Well, we are Project Playground. This is a multi-platform software solution that provides access for students and teachers to evaluate and improve collaborative skills among kindergarten, first, and second graders. We are focusing on the next or 21st century skills with collaboration, communication, and contribution. All of these can be found on p21.org's 21st century skills and are also aligned to national common core and state standards. Right now, if you take a look in many elementary classrooms, more and more classrooms are gaining access to technology for the younger students. If we look at our total addressable market, we think that we can make $115 million. That's because we have a pricing structure where we're looking at an app that's a free full version for the first year and then $99 per year per teacher after that. There's also school and dis district pricing options available. So let's talk about this app. Are there others out there doing the same thing? There are apps out there that do project-based learning or track project-based learning. Those apps are like We Learned It and Project Foundry. There's also apps out there for young students, but these ones are focusing just on the soft skills. That's like toddler teasers and look at learn it. Our app combines the two, but what does it do? Students are assessing their skills through, our, through Project Playground. They're self-reporting, they're providing peer feedback on other students in the group, and they're also options for teacher input. Right now we have two versions of this app a teacher and a student view. In the student view, we have Bubs, our friendly mascot. Students tap this character and are then prompted to take assessments based on the collaborative learning that they're doing. We surveyed kindergarten through fourth grade students to see what it is that they like in an app. And we found that they like interactive story worlds where they can build and create. So as an incentive for answering our assessment, students are given tokens and points to actually build their own playground. The way they earn these tokens and points is by answering questions, such as, did you let someone take a turn even though you wanted to do it? This is an important skill for young kids. We have a sound box so that students who cannot yet read can still hear the question, and then they choose the avatar that most likely reflects what they did. We also want them to network with others. So they're going to show us, who did you work with today? They're going to share their ideas. What did they actually talk about in their group? And then because this is a portfolio app, students are taking pictures of their projects. Why are these benefits for the teachers? Well, it's organizing student evaluation, supporting project management, and it's also giving suggestions to help teachers further social development. This is the teacher view. Teachers are gaining data from their students' assessments, and they're also given suggestions for improvement. They can also get recommendations for which students that would work well with. There's parent reports, and we're talking to teachers. There are a ton of people interested in this. We have two buyers, 
And we have over 30 teachers who said they would pilot this in their classroom, including three specific school districts. It's very scalable. Right now it's K to two. It can move three to six as long as we keep changing things for older students. We can continue to mine the data. We have a diverse team, and I want to leave you with the thought that when you get one student to learn how to work collaboratively, all the students can start to learn how to work collaboratively. Thank you. Um, okay, so I have a lot of questions, so I'm trying to think of the right one to ask. Um, could you talk a little bit about how you would implement the more adaptive parts of this, the, the parts that have to do with making suggestions about who should work together, making suggestions about where each student should go um, from where they are, that, that whole aspect, of the, the sort of adaptive data aspect? So it builds up over time. At first, the app is learning about the student. So we can, it's kind of doing to put students in different roles to learn about how they function. But over time, uh, through collaborations with researchers, we will use machine learning to kind of optimize the, uh, the data, what we can learn from the, uh, the app and to kind of maximize suggestions as well. And the idea is that there's various roles that the students would play in these groups, and we don't want the kids always playing to their strengths. You don't want the loud, outspoken kid always being the leader and the quiet kid always getting stuck as being the secretary. So the idea is that the, the, since we're measuring these three characteristics, finding areas where they can grow, and then the app suggests who they should work with who also need different areas for growth, and then giving them suggested roles to play based on those areas for growth so they're not always just playing for their strengths. How uh, adaptable, how easy is it for teachers to use this? It's very easy because what the app does is it will centralize all the data from all the students. So what teachers see in the teacher view, that's their listing of their entire class. What we're looking at right now is we're just looking at Zeke's profile. But the teacher can click on any child, pull up the same profile, and what would change would just be their collaboration, communication, and contribution characteristics. So that's one of the benefits of going to the district level. So as student profiles are already created, then you can benefit from that kind of multiple uses of it. And we're kind of borrowing what's been happening in other areas like the class dojo kind of framework. There already is kind of established way that teachers know how these things work and we're kind of capitalizing on that. Um, so, how do you see this working in a classroom? Does everyone have an iPad? What, what's going on? <laughs> Ideally, we would say this would be for a one-to-one -one environment or a class with a BYOD policy. However, it's only supposed to take three to five minutes to use in each class period. So it's not something where you need to be tethered to your iPad the entire time. If you have three or four iPads in a classroom, kids can easily tap on their name, pull up their project, take a picture. The project is the actual main event in this. We're not so much focusing on the app, we're focusing on the collaborative learning inside your classroom and coming up with a way to measure what's going on there. So like, and at first, the idea is this is kind of an assessment at the end of class, but over time, we would think it also would like prompt them at the beginning of class, so they check in, oh, here's some suggestions for that kid on that day. Uh, and Because the idea is we're doing two things. We're both assessing and improving at the same time. So it has a dual function.